Hello and welcome to this Coolux Pandora's Box version 5 tutorial. In this episode we will explain one of the major new features of the version 5. Video export. The video export feature offers the user quite a few advantages. On the one hand you can now render and export files that could then be shown to a potential customer right at the beginning of a project workflow or you export the complete final project right after its successful completion. When using multiple particle systems for example or a lot of HD videos at the same time up to the point where your hardware might slowly begin to reach its limits you can now use the video export feature in order to render the content straight from the timeline and then reuse the exported content as just a single layer. Let us assume a situation where we have created a particle system that involves such a great number of particles that it really pushes the performance power of our real-time render engine to its limits. We have a particular part of our timeline here which we would like to render and export. First of all, open the tab section and scroll until you reach Video Export. Once we select Video Export, it will open in the middle of the screen, where you can also find the assets and device types. As you can now see, this window offers us a range of different possibilities. First of all, we have to select an in point, where we define at what point in the timeline the export is supposed to start. We also have an out point that tells the program until what point the content will be rendered. Let's select an in and out point. As you can clearly see, we also have another collection of numbers to the right that show us the maximum duration. The maximum duration might seem a bit strange at first because we've just selected an in and out point, but you have to keep in mind that the video export is simply working its way through the timeline. Let's say we see a jump queue in this project and had defined going from 5 seconds until the 15 second mark. Then that would mean we would never actually reach the end because the video export would simply follow the jump queue to jump back to the beginning again and again. We would have created a never ending clip, which we don't want. If I wanted to export the loop I just defined twice, I would have to set the in point to 5 seconds, which translates into 500 for 5 seconds the out point at 1500, which is 1500, which equals 15 seconds. Since we want to render this bit twice, I would set 20 seconds as the maximum duration. As a next step, we will have to select a name, in order to make sure we create a reference to the file which we will call Starfield. The video file we will export will then have exactly that name. The checkbox Show Unique Name means that a bracket will automatically be created after the file name should another file of the same name already exist in order to make it impossible to accidentally delete one of your files. If we look a little bit further down the page, we will see the directory folder and the path where our file will come to be. Our video file will be placed in this directory as a preset. In case you want to change this, you can simply click on Browse Directory and select a different folder. As a next step, we have to go into a little bit more detail about the things we wish to export. You might recognize the render settings from the encoder extension. Furthermore, you can choose between different resolutions that could be used for rendering the content. Obviously, the quality increases the higher the resolution is you choose. In this case, let us choose the first HD setting, 1280x720 pixels. You also have the choice of entering a new setting, and giving it a new name by the way. In most cases, one of the presets will do, since we have many different presets to choose from. With the first HD setting selected in our example, we could now additionally check the grey areas here including the sound, which would then be exported as a separate WAV file. Once we have chosen the settings we want, basically all we would have to do now is to click on Export. However, it is important to note though at this point that different files will be rendered, depending on our choice of preview, which could either be Global View, Output 1 or Output 2. Let's say you have a soft edge and you have just moved your X and Y coordinates, then you could now export the stars from left to right, or in case of using global preview, 
and the well-known keyboard shortcut Alt and middle mouse button pressed down, you could move the stars around and decide to export the global view instead. Once you have truly finalized your settings, continue by clicking on Export. You will now be able to see how the video is being rendered bit by bit following the timeline. If you are exporting extremely demanding content in your manager that wouldn't be able to be rendered in real time, these steps would obviously take slightly longer. As mentioned before, you can see that the now pointer is going to jump back to the beginning of the clip and will continue to work its way through the timeline. If you were to click anywhere else now while the export is still underway, you would receive a small message at the bottom left of the screen that the export is still happening and that the user interface has therefore been blocked for the time being. You can however cancel the export through pressing Ctrl and Q so you won't have to wait a long time in case you're in the middle of creating a really big file. After the render output has been finished, you might notice that a video export folder has been automatically created in the Asset tab of your tree navigation, where you can now find the fully exported MPEG-2 video file as a M2V without sound. Just to quickly show you how to reintegrate the newly created file into your workflow, we will jump to 25 seconds on our timeline, select layer 1, and then add the new video to the media, and now just fade up the opacity and click on play. You can instantly see that the exported video file is now playing on the layer. Your particle system has now become a simple video file. Thank you very much for your interest.